Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, number four on the 2021 Calc AB and Calc BC exams. And this is a problem where you are given the graph of the first derivative, basically. So the graph of f is given, um, g of x is the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. Now, uh, on what open intervals is the graph of g concave up? So first, I'm going to find the derivative. So g prime is this is second fundamental theorem. So you take the upper bound and you sub it in. So that gives you f of x times the derivative of the upper bound, but that's just the derivative of x is one. So g prime is just f of x. I know that g is concave up wherever its derivative is increasing. So when g prime, which is f of x, is increasing, that's where we're concave up. So right here and right here. And so I'm just gonna write that up. g of x is concave up on the intervals uh, negative 4 to negative 2, and also from 2 to 6. And then we want to give a reason for that. So I'm going to say because g prime of x, which equals f of x, I never know how paranoid to be about that, so I just like repeat it ad nauseum, um, is increasing on those intervals. So my reasoning is that g prime is increasing. I have the graph of g prime, so I want to base everything on that if I can. All right, and that's part A. Let's take a look at part B. Part B is, um, shall we say, a little annoying. Not, not really, but kind of. Let P be the function defined by P of X equals G of X times F of X. We have the graph of F, remember? Um, find P prime of three. So this is just the product rule. So P prime is gonna be first, which is G of X, derivative of the second, which is F prime, plus second, which is F, and then derivative of the first, which is G prime. All right, now the key is we got to find a bunch of values, right? So we're plugging in three. So we need to know g of three. We need to know f prime of three. We need to know f of three and g prime of three. All of these things we need to know. All right, g of three. Look at the definition of g. It's the integral from zero to x of f of t. So g of three is the integral from zero to three. So we got to figure this out. So um, you go to the graph, and there's a really nice feature of the graph between 0 and 2. And that feature is that uh, this triangle and this triangle are exactly the same size, but have opposite signs. So they don't contribute anything. So really, to figure out g of 3, we just need this region. So that, you can count boxes. It's three boxes and half of a box. So that's 3.5, but below the axis. So this is going to be negative 3.5. So that's negative 3.5. We will be subbing that in. F prime, this is the graph of F, right? So F prime of 3, we just need the slope of this graph at 3. And that slope, you can see, is up 1 over 1. So it's just 1. Um, F of 3 is you literally read the value off, right? So at 3, you're at negative 3. So that's going to be negative 3. And then G prime of 3... We know that g prime of x is f of x, so g prime of 3 is actually f of 3, which is negative 3. Plug them all in, do some arithmetic. Um, so p prime of 3 is going to be, uh, we got negative 3.5 times 1, and then uh, plus negative 3 times negative 3. You could leave this if you wanted to, but that's 9 minus, uh, minus 3.5, so it's going to be 5.5 overall. But you could have left it. You don't need to simplify that. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Also, remember, you can always slow these videos down. Uh, you don't need to comment that I talk too fast. It's fine if you want to do that, but, you know, hit the gear, slow it down. We'll all be okay. All right, find the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x over x squared minus 2x. Going into this before I did it, I was like, this is definitely going to be L'Hopital's, and I'm definitely going to separate the numerator and the denominator, and not just write equals zero over zero, which is what I always did in my life until we changed the rules. So I'm going to say the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is equal to, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually equal to g of 2, but g of 2 is the integral from 0 to 2 of f of t dt, and that is those two cancel, uh, canceling, canceling out triangles. So that's going to give us zero. So we now have zero for our numerator. The limit as x approaches 2 of the denominator, x squared minus 2x, is also definitely just equal to 0. That's a polynomial. So we're allowed to apply L'Hopital's rule. So therefore, by L'Hopital's rule, what I'm going to do, because I'm never 100% sure on what my work should look like, 
is I write the original and say that it is equal to, and we're applying L'Hopital, so it's going to be the derivative of the top, which is the derivative of g of x is f of x, so the limit as x approaches 2 of derivative of the top is f of x. The derivative of the bottom is 2x minus 2. Now if we sub in 2, we need to find f of 2. f of 2, if you look at it, is definitely negative 4. So negative 4 over 4 minus 2. And you could, I don't know why you would, you could leave this, or you can write that our answer is negative 2. Good application of L'Hopital's. That seems to be how they like to do L'Hopital's these days, give you a graph um, and make you kind of like work with the graph and work with a function simultaneously. All right, part D. Find the average rate of change of G on the interval from negative 4 to 2. All right, so that's, that's part 1. Then, does the mean value theorem guarantee a value C for which G prime of C is equal to the average rate of change? So that's basically saying... Uh, d does it sat does G satisfy the criteria for the mean value theorem? Is G continuous and is G d continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open? That's what we need to answer. So first, the average rate of change. Average rate of change is algebra one slope, right? So we're doing G of two minus G of negative four over six, basically two minus negative four. So I'm gonna write that out using the definition, right? G of two is the integral from zero to two of F of T dt. Um, g of negative 4 is uh, the integral from 0 to negative 4. I don't like that though, right? 0 to negative 4, something not right about that because negative 4 is less than 0. So what I'm going to do is pull out the 1 sixth, leave this. Now I'm going to change the bounds. I'm going to swap the bounds and change the sign, right? So it's going to become minus negative, which is plus, the integral from negative 4 to 0 of f of t dt. So that's, that's a common thing. S change the bounds, swap the bounds, and change the sign. I can't remember which one I usually say. Swap the bounds, change the sign. Um, so now if you look at it, we're actually just going straight from negative 4 all the way to 2. That's what we're doing. 1 6 of the integral from negative 4 to 2. What's, uh, what's nice about it is we still have those canceling triangles, right, from 0 to 2. So 0 to 2 is not contributing anything. We just need the integral from negative 4 to 0. So this is, to the left of that line is a triangle, base is 2, height is 6, um, so that's 6. Then this is either a trapezoid or you count boxes. So it's like 2 by 4 is 8, and then you get another half of 4. So 8 plus 2 is 10. So I am getting uh, 1 sixth of 16, which is 8 thirds. So that's my average rate of change. Now the question is, does the mean value theorem apply to g of x basically on this interval? Um, so I need to show or disprove that g of x is differentiable and therefore continuous. Well, if you look at what we were told, we were told that f is a continuous function and we know that f is the derivative of g of x. So the derivative of g of x exists everywhere. That means that g of x is differentiable and that means it's continuous and that means that the mean value theorem applies. Now the mission is to write that up. So I'm going to say, since g of nope, since f of x equals g prime of x is continuous on negative 4 to 2, which it definitely is continuous negative 4 to 6, but continuous from negative 4 to 2, g of x is differentiable on that interval. Everywhere the derivative exists, a function is differentiable. So differentiable on that interval. Um, and then I didn't know where to go, so I just like went into mean value theorem mode. Um, so since g of x is differentiable, g of x is continuous. G of x is continuous on the closed interval, differentiable on the open interval. This is me not being 100% sure how they would want me to write it, so I just write everything. Um, so if that is the case, the mean value theorem guarantees a C between negative 4 and 2, such that G prime of C equals G of 2 minus G of negative 4 over 6. So the answer is yes, the mean value theorem does apply. Um, so that's the whole question there, and uh, that's problem number four. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.